Once in a lifetime, there's an athlete that changes her sport. Suzanne Langland did just that in the 1920s. The French tennis sensation was in a class all by herself, transforming a country club sport into the hottest ticket in France. If you want to buy a ticket to, to, to look uh, at Suzanne Langland, you, I think you must be here. Between the baseline and, and the net, I think here is the best place. You know, you can see the, her fast running, her jumps, and all the photographers are, I think they were here just to take the, the picture. She won eight Grand Slam singles titles and an Olympic gold medal. Her repertoire of backhands and forehands sometimes looked more like a dance performance than a tennis match. She was running very quickly and jumping to a net and sometimes with a lob she was jumping very high with uh, her knee close to her face and sometimes her feet above her head. Lenglen wasn't just a superior tennis player, she was also a daring trendsetter. She arrived for matches wearing a silk dress and wrapped in a fur coat. It was famed Suzanne Longlin who led a style revolt after World War I. She served up a costume that made the game more interesting. French fashionistas attended Langland's matches, hoping for a glimpse at her latest styles. She wore uh, some skirts with her nude arms. It was a revolution. She was very free. Besides giving the media plenty to write about, Langland also became the first world number one in the history of women's tennis. Men actually paid to attend her matches, unheard of at the time. She further courted controversy by turning professional. But in 1938, just weeks after she was diagnosed with leukemia, Langlin died. She was just 39. Parisians have maintained her legacy though. A metro stop bears her name, and so does the sport and culture center she founded. But the ultimate honor came decades later, when the second show court at Roland Garros was named in her memory.